All right, making a Parsons table um, can be a little tricky if you don't know what you're doing. Uh, but first thing you need to do is select your wood. I've selected maple, as you can see here. And what I did is I drew some lines across all the pieces and then uh, marked the areas where I was going to do the um, biscuit joint. This is important because you want to make sure everything lines up correctly and that your pieces of wood. So you can see here I've marked them uh, one through six. Uh, this has been the last piece. And as you can see over here, I've joined uh, the pieces of wood together using some glue. And I'm doing it in two halves because you have better control over the wood and the bowing and all the variables that happen when you join the pieces together. Um, you'll have less sanding if you do it this way. It's a it's a really good technique and I would highly recommend doing that. Again, the most important thing is just to take your time and um, to keep track of everything and make sure that everything's lining up correctly. Okay, the two halves of the tabletop are joined together and this is a really important um, step in the building process. One reason is you want the table to be as level as possible when you join it. And as you can see here, I've alternated the clamps. And that's just to make sure, because when you naturally clamp something, it's gonna bow it. So you have to do every other one to keep um, the top level. And over here, I had a unique issue. Um, I had to use another clamp to pull the bow, and now it's completely level. And I'll show you that with a level to show you how level it is. Okay, what you want to do is take a level and put it across your tabletop to make sure it's not bowing any. You want to look for any gaps that would be happening across the entire tabletop. So I'm just going to show you, this is perfectly level on the top, there's no bowing, and I've set the level across different sections of the tabletop uh, to make sure that this is the case for all, all the sections. This is a good little uh, trick to do when you're building a table because the, it will bow if you add clamps. So you want to make sure you alternate them and this is a nice little nifty way to check. Okay, what I'm about to do is start sanding the top of this uh, Parsons table. I'm using a belt sander. These can be a little tricky if you don't know how to use them. They can really gouge or mess up the top. Um, so if you have never used them before, I would suggest practicing on some other uh, type of surface rather than the one that you're uh, going to finally finish. Uh, let me show you how I'm going to do this, and um, it's uh, pretty straightforward. You just got to cover all the tops. You got to take out some of the little um, the glue and the joints here, and smooth it all over really well. All right, let me show you how I'm going to do that. for the Parsons table. And what I'm doing here is I'm cutting this at a 45 degree angle on my table saw here. And then I'm taking my chisel and I'm chiseling out and cutting back um, the wood here and you have to hand cut it and then sand it. And then these uh, inserts uh, get installed, uh, two of them get installed right here and right here. Uh, and that's how you mount the legs to the skirt. And um, this is the hardest part of the project because it requires a lot of precision, especially when you match up the, uh, the legs to the corner of the tables and then you get the inside mounting. Um, and I'll show you more on that to come. Okay, I've drilled the holes for the insert. Um, this is the insert, let me just show you. It's right here. Um, I get these from Rockler. Um, it comes in a pack of eight, uh, they're really great. Um, and what, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to epoxy uh, them to the hole here and then just fit it in and it will be nice, tug and secure and ready for the bolt to be accepted. Um, you do two in each leg, that way it gives it nice strong support. I created a jig for this, let me show you that. This is my fancy jig to make sure I get it nice and square. Um, kind of just really rustic and old school. I cut it at two 45 degree angles and just drill straight down.
All right, to build the skirt, I use a Craig jig and their clamp. And what I do is um, I'm offsetting the first uh, hole uh, by two inches and a quarter. And that's just because, I'll show you later, there's a bracket that has to go in there. I want to make sure I have enough clearance for it. So again, this is the first um, uh, hole that I'm drilling, and I'm using the Craig jig. Uh, it's a great tool to do this. And I'm going to do this to all my skirts um, and then glue and then use the Craig jig. to the table and what I want to do is make sure that everything is square and true. So I have my square and I lined everything up, clamped it. I'm using two blocks here to get equalized pressure and kind of distribute it a little bit more evenly. And I just did this very carefully, clamped it down, make sure everything was right angles. And I'm about to you screw it in and it'll be set and ready to go. For big projects, um, and just in general, I like to buy the thousand count uh, screws. I always use coarse in woodworking. It gets a better grip. And these are what I'm using for my uh, Parsons table. All right, the skirt's been installed. Now I'm gonna be working on the braces. I've test fitted a brace here. Uh, what I have to do is drill four holes, two in each side. I have to pre-drill them first because they will split if I don't do that. And then once this is installed, I then come back and drill two holes here for the bolts to go through and uh, attach these legs. All right, I'm installing the braces. The way I do this is I just kind of set it up, I find the center, and then I draw a line, and then I score it all the way across using this right here to get a straight line. And then I just drill a hole and countersink it, and then I just set it up right against here. I put some glue on it, and then glue them in. You can see the finished result over here and what it looks like. All right, I've attached the first leg. As you can see here, the bolts went through and everything aligned perfectly, and this is secure. All right, I'm gonna move on to the next one. And the way I do this is, once my metal inserts are inserted, I use them, uh, I put the metal inserts in here and then I stand this leg up like this and I make an impression on the back of this block so it marks where I need to drill the hole. All right, the legs are installed. Everything is good and came out really well. The next thing that I'm gonna do is take the legs off, do one final sanding, breaking all the rough edges give the top a nice clean sand, and then I'll be ready for staining. This is it. It's come together really well. All right, I've stained the bottom and I've uh, put some polyurethane on it. Um, I left the bottom coat in its natural uh, wood um, just to give it some nice contrast of the undertone, a kind of nice little surprise. I have my logo in the middle, and the bottom is polyurethane, and it's drying right now, and the sides are stained. The reason I do this in this type of stage is it makes it a lot easier to do this in sections. Um, the bottom gets one coat of poly, just if there's a protective aspect. Once it gets flipped over, uh, I put four more coats on the outside. So this will get four coats a polyurethane, um, but I have to stain the top first because I stain the bottom and then next will be the top and I'll polyurethane that. And this is it. All right, I finished staining the top. I have to say this came out really, really good. I'm very pleased with it. Um, I have to let it dry eight hours before I can put my polyurethane on top of it. And I'll put four or five coats of poly on top to make sure it's really protected and uh, for a lot of use. But this thing looks gorgeous. It is really nice. All right, I use Varathane polyurethane. Uh, this is really easy to apply. And what I do is I pour a lot on the table and I just 
move it around with a sponge brush. This is the brush that I use. And I simply just take it and I smooth it all out across the entire table. And this will be the third coat. And then I'll sand this and do, do the fourth and final coat. All right, here's the table all finished. There's the fireplace in the background. I'm really pleased with how this came out. It came out really well. I got the chairs online in uh, raw wood and then I stained them to match the table. I'm really pleased with how it came out. It looks really good in my house and kitchen dining room area. There you go. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe and like our channel.